Ever since my entry talking about the boxer fighting style in my normal humans in fighting games list, I've received a few requests from viewers to expand that idea into a full video, so why not? It's pretty self-explanatory. The criteria for this video are these fighting game characters have to be traditional boxers by definition. So no characters that use a style of mixed martial arts that simply include boxing among many other styles. It's fine if these characters have a few attacks that use legs or other parts of the body, but they primarily have to rely on some good old fists of fury. Also, bonus points if they wear their boxing gloves to the match, even though it's a non-regulation boxing fight since I love campiness. This topic was suggested by viewers Zachary Kusevich, Dr. Awesomeness, Kyle Fernandez, and LOLGuy63. So ring that bell since it's time for the top 10 boxers in fighting games. Number 10, Mickey Rogers from Art of Fighting. Mickey Rogers was a CPU opponent in the first Art of Fighting game who got his moment to shine in the spotlight in the sequel as a playable character. His design went through some pretty big changes between these games, namely his hairstyle and outfit, only keeping the white shirt, red shorts color scheme. Mickey should be pretty pleased with his new look though, since he's now based on Muhammad Ali. His moveset stayed the same, which has some unique variations on the standard boxing fighting tactics we'll see from most entries on this list. His punches can emit fire, that's either one fast cross punch or this man is magic. He can also throw a punch that produces a random projectile and manipulate the sound barrier to create sonic waves. While those attacks are not as innovative when looking at fighting games as a whole, it was a nice attempt by SNK to give a boxer an offensive tool when he does not feel like getting in close. Number 9, Bowman Delgado from Rival Schools. I used to think he was the school principal since he looks so much older than the other student characters, but he's a student. He also has the attributes of a boxer with his stance and technique. The only thing he's missing are some authentic boxing gloves, but he can always borrow those from his teammate Tiffany if he truly needs them. However, I don't think they'd even come close to fitting him since his hands are large enough to crush a sizable gourd. He personally hates fighting and would much rather keep the peace, but if he has to, he'll participate in the unavoidable fight. However, fighting games find a way to turn petty misunderstandings into reasons to have a match, so he finds himself doing that a lot. Since he's a religious man who's training to become a preacher, all of his attack names reference God or Heaven. And some of those attacks send his opponent flying. It's like he's trying to end the violence by putting the conflict as far away from him as possible. I've gotta say, for a man who's a pacifist, his smile is so contagious when on the battlefield. Number 8, Little Mac and Super Smash Brothers. He was the highlighted boxer in my normal humans in fighting games list since he's the only guy in this game who doesn't have magical powers or weaponry or eggs. In his series of origin punch out, Little Mac doesn't have much variation to his techniques. He punches high, he gut punches, he has a mean uppercut, and that's it. So when Smash Bros had to turn those three attacks into a full moveset, they took a lot of cues from actual boxing. While it's not as mystical and magical as the rest of the roster, it gets the job done. Plus, who doesn't love hitting their opponent with a punch that feels and travels like a speeding truck? As for the existence of his Gigamac transformation, I can't find a way to explain that. Let's just say it was steroids or whey protein. Take your pick. Number 7, Arthur's Boxers in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. These boxers are prime for battle. Once Arthur's armor breaks off after his level 1 power-up armor wears off, no need to fear. He takes no additional damage compared to how much he takes when his normal armor is on, so these boxers provide the proper protection. These undergarments are some of the best seen in fighting games, rivaling only Urian's, my favorite variation being the Golden Boxers from one of his games in his series of origin, Ghouls and Ghosts Quest for the Forlorn Pantaloons. When in these boxers, his moveset is still medieval weaponry. But the criteria I said, it breaks it. 
The joke is ruined. Fine, I'll do a real number seven. Nelson from King of Fighters 14. Nelson and his whole team are likable. Hattori tries to be a ninja, but just ends up acting like a cosplayer who knows ninjutsu. Zarina has a toucan, how can you not love that? But Nelson has the most interesting backstory. He lost his arm in an accident, which also left his wife in a coma. He received an advanced cybernetic prosthetic that allowed him to continue boxing without any issues. Now his only hope is that his wife awakens from her coma and they can go back to life as it once was. When beating the arcade mode with his team, Nelson gets his happy ending, so it's a pretty satisfying conclusion to beating the final boss. His moveset thrives on resetting or restanding his opponents, so be prepared to block if you find yourself playing against a Nelson main. Also, it's fun to win with his big super move since he looks so happy after doing it. It might not be the best time to celebrate though, your opponent still has a quarter of his health bar left. Number 6, Akihiko from Persona 4 Arena. Akihiko is an expert student boxer, oxymoron, who dropped out of college to perfect his fighting style. Evident by his swift moves to dash to each side of his opponent during a combo for an onslaught of left and right hooks, Akihiko shows he's beyond a simple amateur in high school after the time skip between Persona 3 and Persona 4 Arena. He also downgraded his upper clothing options from sweater vest to nothing. Unlike most other characters in the game, he does not rely on his persona to use all of his fighting abilities. He doesn't need the help from Athena or Nightmare Man or Cricketot, pure muscle right here. He brings a knife to a fist fight, but that's apparently only if he needs to cut an emergency stake since he never uses it in combat. Number 5, TJ Combo from Killer Instinct. TJ Combo combos you with his fast boxing moves. Not every nickname can be clever. At least his nickname got him that brand deal with combos. Combos, the world's favorite cylindrical tube snack. Anyway, TJ Combo begins his story the same way in all Killer Instinct games, but I'm going with the path he follows in KI 2013. The evil organization Ultratech said they could make him stronger, and since TJ was obsessed with winning, he decided to take them up on this offer and get some cybernetic enhancements from them. When Ultratech wanted him to intentionally lose a live fight against their brand new Fulgore Cyborg, TJ refused, breaching his contract since he had too much pride. As a result, Ultratech contacted the sports media and said, Hey, remember that time TJ Combo won his champion? Championship after championship without any performance enhancing technology? Well, guess what? <laughs> He's a fraud. Disgraced and stripped of his belts, TJ gets his revenge using a similar method. He tells B Orchid's team all about Ultratech's secrets and joins them for some vengeance of his own. Ridding himself of everything having to do with Ultratech, he literally rips out the cyber enhancements in his arms, making it only TJ Combo, the technology-free human, fighting from here on out. The older games just make him a renegade fighter out only for himself, so it's nice to see him joining the heroes in the newest story. Also good to see that he ditched that eye patch from the second game, the goatee fits him much better. Number 4, Dudley from Street Fighter. Dudley sure appears a lot on my lists, and he's always in the thumbnails. I better change this one for variety's sake. There, perfect. There's a lot to like about Dudley, as discussed in his previous video appearances. He's overly classy, but there's a self-awareness to it. He throws a rose as a weapon. He's dapper, and do I have to mention the tea drinking with boxing gloves on again? Comparing him to other boxers in the series, there's more technique and complexities with his moveset involving more realistic boxing attack methods, like a moving duck that builds momentum to counter his opponent, or a short swing blow, or summoning tornadoes from his fists. Dudley's motivation for participating in these tournaments is certainly not the reason other warriors in game would have, like overcoming the evil within or taking down a world-threatening villain, but it's a fighting game, so I'm not judging. Get this man on the roster any way possible. In Super Street Fighter 4, he joins the tournament so he can find new exotic flowers for his garden and maybe to throw at other people. And in Street Fighter 3, he joins because his father's car was stolen by the main villain, Gil.
The car's a pretty relatable reason to join, though. That's at least $50,000. I'm getting that car back. I don't even think Dudley cared about the ramifications of taking on a godly cult leader with death powers just for a car. That car and his life have similar monetary value. Overall, while Dudley's not the top pick, he's probably my favorite character here looking at his full personality. One, two, the end. Number 3, Vanessa from King of Fighters. Vanessa tops the crowd of SNK fighting game boxers on this list and has the backstory and fighting style to prove why she's the best of them. It also helps that she's been playable in more than one game. She actually takes cues from Rick Stroud's techniques in Fatal Fury 2, but refined them over the years. She's a housewife by day and a secret agent by night, or whenever she's needed. Maybe secret agent by late afternoon if that's when evil's afoot? She's all for defeating the evil organization presented to us in the plot, usually being nests. During these missions, Vanessa understands the inconvenience of boxing in a suit, so she wears just enough formal wear to make you think she's fully dressed for some important meeting, but has her dress shirt cut off enough where it allows for full upper mobility. She's very reliant on her boxing stance, which is not a bad thing at all. Out of this, besides the standard punches, she can move at near teleportation speeds. She also does the Dudley-esque wind is her friend punches. Now out of all of her tools, my favorite move by her is where she punches these blades of death. She can cut through reality with punches of this speed. Number 2, Steve Fox from Tekken. Steve's role in the series is learning why the Mishima Zaibatsu Corporation chose to breed him using Nina Williams when she was in a cryogenic sleep. I hope that synopsis did not include too many points that made you go, wait, what? The series has not explained it to a point where I can give a solid conclusion, but it's clear enough that these Aibatsu had high hopes to use Steve for their nefarious ways, and somehow he was given away. His life was undoubtedly better off, as he became the middleweight boxing champion over in the UK. After learning that Mishima Zaibatsu was responsible for his shady past, he was motivated to destroy them in any way possible in any walk of life. And wouldn't you know, anytime there's a major tournament in the Tekken universe, the Mishima Zaibatsu has some influence behind it. And that's how we get Steve Fox in the story. Being a boxer, his moveset is expected, but unlike other entries, he actually has a third dimension to work with, so fighting for him is closer to being in the actual ring. He bobs, he weaves, he dances around you, but does not use those feet for attacking since he's a fair boxer. Whoops, never mind. My favorite use of his boxing tactics occurred outside the ring though, in his Tekken 5 arcade mode ending. Here, he single-handedly took down the entire Mishima Zaibatsu laboratory with his fists alone. Just him punching through everything, followed by an explosion that of course he does not turn around to look at. He did have an assist from a lighter for that last part, but it doesn't take away from the moment. With boxing being such a notable archetype in fighting games, of course we have enough for a proper honorable mention segment. Axel Hawk from Fatal Fury. I like him because he's based on George Foreman and we never see boxers based on him in video games. Sure, my generation knows him better for the grill, but I still like his style of being the big guy who never acts like he's in pain in the ring. Rick Stroud from Fatal Fury, he inspired Vanessa's moveset and is a lightweight boxer, which you don't normally see in fighting games. Michael Max from Fatal Fury, Fatal Fury has a lot of boxers. Shen Wu from King of Fighters, I don't consider him a boxer, but his self-proclaimed style is called rowdy bare-fisted boxing. He uses too many kicks and two-handed moves to make me think he's a true boxer. Andy the Anvil from Skullgirls, he's never been playable on his own, but if he was, he'd be a goofy boxer and probably one of the more interesting ones. He's an anvil with human limbs, so I'm already intrigued. And Roger's family and Alex from Tekken. Are they actually boxing, or are they just animals that we put boxing gloves on and their natural instinct to fight kind of looks like boxing? I went with 
with the classic fighting game boxer for number one. I couldn't gloss over the boxer who's one of the most iconic sub-bosses in gaming history. It's no surprise with that description. Number one, Balrog, or Mike Bison as he's called in Japan, from Street Fighter. Balrog is the former heavyweight champ who was booted from the Boxing Federation for using dirty fighting moves. With how high he leaps in the air to do a headbutt, he was hardly covert with his illegal boxing tactics. The final straw was when Balrog accidentally killed one of his opponents using these dirty boxing tactics, forcing him to find new ways to use his strength to make some money. He now just works as a main enforcer for Shadaloo because it's a way to make quick cash. He's hardly loyal, but either Dictator Bison is incredibly inattentive, or he knows that Balrog knows that betrayal to Shadaloo results in death. Despite the revocation of his championship belt, he still proclaims I'm the champ post-victory. His opponent never bothers to question him, saying that though, since no one's gonna fact check the guy who just bashed your face in. You'll also have to deal with him ripping off his shirt if he wins, which I used to think was him just flexing his shirt off with pure muscle. I was going to tell him either get a tailor or lay off the muscle milk, but it turns out he was just really excited over his win. Balrog's fighting style is not as complex as Dudley's, but there's still something to it. It's based on heavy strikes, since he's a brute force character who's more reckless. It's not the most revolutionary moveset, but he's more here for what he represents in fighting games. He even helped introduce a new boxer to the Street Fighter series with Ed. Oh wow, Ed took up boxing? Who would have thought that would happen after only hanging out with Balrog for five years straight? Despite his gruff personality, his legacy across numerous fighting games wins Balrog the title bout among these boxers in fighting games. So what did you think of these choices? Which boxers deserve another round and who may be a bit overrated? Which great fighting game boxers did I not even give a mention to in this video? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.